Welcome. Episode number five. Ask Corey Pegues. So waiting for a few people to come on. I'm so happy about this show. It's the first show. I got a special guest. A super special guest. We're gonna be talking about legalization of marijuana. Uh, you know, I'm gonna speak from a law enforcement perspective. And he is a uh, dispensary owner. He owns his own dispensary in Virginia, and he'll be telling you all about that, the pros and cons of using it. Um, he also uses it himself. His name is Michael Stoney, uh, old friend of mine, good friend of mine, actually somebody I've known for a very long time. We grew up together, and uh, we're about to do it. We're about to get it done. Now, we're just going to wait a few minutes now to see if it's good. Uh, you know, the Police Citizens Encounter series. I was super, super happy for all the participation. Everyone who participated sent in their questions. It meant a lot. It meant a lot. We got a lot of positive feedback. So... He just came on. He just about to bring him. Oof, these lights are hot. I have like all of these lights going on. Y'all, y'all. Yeah. Hey. Yo. What's going on? You here? You yeah. Tired. Can you see me? Yeah, can you hear? You see me? That's good. I see you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me Loud good? And clear. Yep. Okay, that's great. Well, my head, my head ain't shining too much, is it? <laughs> yeah, you, you need one of these CPE hats, man. You gotta yes. need one of these CPE hats. <laughs> Send it over. Send it over, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm excited, man. Do your thing. I'm with you. Yeah. Well, audience, we got no. None other than my good friend, my brother from my other mother, Michael Stoney, has just joined us on Axe Corey Pegues. Uh, we'll be talking about legalization of marijuana, the pros and the cons, and I'm going to speak from a law enforcement uh, perspective. Many of you know that I'm a retired police officer from the New York City Police Department. <clears throat> Actually, Michael Stoney is also a retired detective from the New York City Police Department. He actually was injured in the line of duty. He was shot by, um, you know, this perp <laughs> uh, years ago, many years ago, causing him to um, have to retire from his injury. And with that being said, some of the things he's going to talk about with the marijuana, he's going to speak about how it's helping him in his journey of getting better. Um, you know, because it's been years later, and he's still having ill effects from the gunshot wound. I think he still has the bullet lodged like in between um, in his chest. Yeah. So, well, let me just tell you this. My position on law enforcement is we need to legalize marijuana. For years and years and years, we've been dealing with the um, war on drugs. And what do we do? We've been doing it since the Reagan era. And what are we doing today? <laughs> We're still doing the war on drugs. And what's happening? We're locking people up, especially with marijuana. What we're doing we're locking the same people up. That's why when you see in the newspaper somebody got locked up, they have 50 arrests, and you go, wow, that's a bunch of arrests. When you actually really go down the line of the arrests, it's a bunch of nonsense, you know, arrests. Marijuana, illegal possession of marijuana, smoking in public, all of this nonsense. And we got to get rid of that. 13 states have already come online to legalize marijuana. And I'm telling you here first on the Actually Quick show, New York, within the next, I'm saying probably a year and a half and the COVID kind of messed all of this stuff up but i think a year and a half within a year and a half we'll be online with legalized marijuana again it's 13 states all around us i, I know uh massachusetts just went live went live with it i just spoke out in denver colorado a couple of years ago they had me speak at a marijuana convention everybody's on board seattle i was in seattle when i spoke at the university of seattle first thing after we finished mike i said yo Take me to the dispensary. Where's the dispensary at? <laughs> you know, so everybody's online. And all of these states that went online, 
they haven't had all of these problems that people think is going to happen. And another thing, well, why we have to take it out of policing, because you can't arrest your way, you can't arrest your way out of a drug addiction. If somebody's on drugs, arresting them and putting them in jail is not helping them. It's not helping them in the least. So you can't arrest your way out of a drug addiction. So we need to change that. The biggest drug in America is alcohol, and it's legalized. It's legalized. It's the most addictive thing out. I, I can tell you personally. I know, I you know, been known to have a few, but um, it's legalized. It's legalized. And just imagine, just going into a, a nice dispensary like, like um, Stony has. You know, I affectionately call him Stony. So forgive me. You know, his first name is Michael, but we all call him Stone. You know, you could just go to the corner store and buy your dime bag of weed, as opposed to going into the alleyway and buying it from me or Stoney if we was in the street selling. Like you gotta go in a dark alleyway, not knowing if you're gonna get robbed. And the main thing is you don't even know what the hell you're buying. It could be tea leaves, it could be something that they made up. You have to trust these people. You know, I know in my former life in, in the street selling drugs, many times drug dealers sold people soap and they thought it was crack. You know, so, so uh, tea leaves for marijuana, all kind of stuff. So. You know, we take that away. That underground, that whole dangerous element, that underground, it, it'll be gone. We no longer got to worry about dealing with drug dealers because you could just go into to the uh, pharmacy or to a dispensary and get your, your product and leave. You don't have to worry about it. And like when I first went to Colorado, um, Stone, I first went out there, I thought it was going to be like marijuana everywhere, all over the place. It was going to be everywhere, but it's not like that. You can't even tell that it's out there. I actually went to a dispensary. I think they only have two dispensaries out of all of those dispensaries out there owned by a black person. And I think she owns two of them. So I went to one of them. Um, you know, you get your product. You know, you know I don't smoke, Mike. You know I don't smoke. But I'm there. I'm like, yo, let me check. Let me get one of these freaking what you call them, cupcakes, whatever y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me try. Let me let me just go go there you actually show your driver's license you have to have state id they identify you log you in give you the product and you can the product or smoke the product there it's wrapped i i then i i want to ask you about that too when you start speaking on it why do i my guess is it's sealed and wrapped so you're not in the street consuming because they package it like Ziploc with a sticker on it. You can't. You can't even open the bag until you get home. And um, so I've been talking about legalizing marijuana for quite some time, as you can see right here. Boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. This is an op-ed that I wrote titled "End the NYPD War on Marijuana." I wrote this op-ed back in. Uh, 2018 stone i wrote this op-ed about legalizing marijuana because you know it's been up it's been up for vote out here and uh i know the governor was he was all for it last year to do it but i think you know some political wrangling it, it didn't happen but everybody knows in new york it's going to be online like we we can't keep locking up people for marijuana for you know i'm a national speaker for this organization called elite law enforcement action partnership and we're basically talking about legalizing all drugs. I, just legalize them. Give them safe spaces. Like in Canada, they just opened up a safe space in Canada where if you want to shoot heroin, you're going to go to this place. They're going to let you shoot. When you come down, when you come up off your high, they got counselors there that's going to talk to you. They're trying to get people off drugs. The world is changing, and America is supposed to be like on the forefront of things, and we're so far in the rear with this whole marijuana thing because where, what's that country they've been legal forever where all the rappers everybody go to to get uh, uh amsterdam. marijuana amsterdam, amsterdam. yeah they, after over 20 some years probably probably longer than that you know we way in the in the rear and the other thing is it can it can help with the tax base the money that will be made from this we can now we can fix our roads you can fix the schools create jobs plenty of jobs and Many. you know for black and brown people except for sitting behind the counter we need some investment like michael stoney has we need investment you need to let us in because like i just said like in denver they kind of they, they boxing people out around the country black black and brown people are kind of boxed out 
they're not but it takes a lot of money to start up one you need a lot of capital you gotta come up with a lot of capital we do know that so you the audience out there we got to get together pool our money together and you know mm-hmm. try to open up you got to be in it to win it you can't be on the outside crying once it's done so you got to start this stuff now get your team together people that got money invest in and say hey because when it's time to go online you got to be ready because you know the people with the big bucks and the big money they're gonna they're gonna be on it and um so let's talk to stoney yo mike let me just introduce him again a retired detective from new york city police department decorated detective he actually got shot as an undercover he was on a buy and bust operation when he got shot he was going to buy you who you you was buying or you was the ghost you was buying i was ghosting you was ghosting is actually that's the most dangerous job because the buyer has some reason to be out there the ghost is the lost cause at one o'clock in the morning in brooklyn trying to explain you can can explain to them what that is the ghost explain to them what that that means well when whenever someone goes out there undercover he's not by himself he has a full team with him and a part of that team um you know he's usually a couple of cars blocks away and a part of that team is someone that's going to ghost or shadow or follow the undercover to watch his every move because an undercover is as as as, uh is trying to fit in as much as possible they can't be worried about communicating on a radio and stuff like that so someone else has to do the talking for them and that job is more often than not more dangerous because anyone out there buying we was actually buying guns actually anyone out, out there buying guns or drugs it's easy to tell someone why you're here. It's the guy that's walking into a neighborhood um, that he's not from, where these guys are pretty much out there and they know everybody. They know who comes in late, what boyfriend goes to that house and blah, blah, blah. So when you come out of nowhere and you don't fit in and you're trying to explain and keep your undercover in sight to keep them safe and to get the backup coming if needed, more often than not, you end up the one to target to be attacked because, uh, and I, like in my instance, I was shot because they thought I was trying to rob them and set them up. We weren't made, so they just opened fire, you know, um, in defense, and that's what they were screaming when they got caught. But um, with that said, man, you know, just to tie in the this, it's, it's, it's amazing. I was looking forward to talking to you. Um, so let's give them a no give. Has, um, you know what, Mike? Since you on, since you got it, just run yeah. with it. Give them some background on you. Just bring the audience up to speed okay. who you are, you know, your background and everything. Okay, well, I'm, I'm you. <laughs> we met in the academy, dog. After growing up together, we like looked at each other like we had three heads. And we was like, what are you doing in this academy? I thought we were supposed to be running from the police. But anyway, we both cleaned our lives up. I have a very similar um, story to yours, but to get, to make this a little bit about what the topic of conversation is about, I'm gonna get right into it, man. Um, first and foremost, you know, I discovered the the the, uh, the importance of, and I, I don't call it marijuana. When you get in the industry, you'll realize that marijuana was a slang that was thrown on Mexicans and where, when the weed was coming out of there. You know, there's a lot of history behind this. I like to call it cannabis. I also don't like to call it a drug. It's a plant. Now, what you do with that plant can create poppy seeds. You can create coke. You can do all these stuff with that plant. But the plant is natural form is a cannabis plant. So what we're asking and what the United States of America did was they demonized and made uh, the cannabis plant a schedule one drug. They called it a drug because there was some sort of euphoria associated with smoking it. So taking it back a step, that plant has uh, a bunch of cannabinoids in it. One of which is THC, the most famous one. THC is known to get you high. Now there's not any drug out there that's for pain that doesn't have some sort of THC in it, you know, and nobody gets addicted to Oxycontin because it takes the pain away. They get on the Oxycontin to take the pain away, then they get addicted to the feeling, AKA Michael Jackson, Prince, in pain, now the feeling they want. So this this drug, so to speak, that's been demonized um, since as far back as we were younger, yes, there was some residual result uh, effects of that by people getting locked up for no reasons and the addiction rate to marijuana really wasn't, they weren't dealing with people who were addicted to marijuana and all that kind of stuff. Marijuana, they were calling a gateway drug because marijuana doesn't get you that high, to be honest with you, when you compare it to the other things they call drugs. So when people are smoking, if it doesn't get you high enough, they throw some coke in it. They add some heroin and then addiction Ooh. starts. 
So Woolies. when they're starting to, yeah, Woolies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so when I first retired, I was shot in the chest, shattered humerus in my arm, collapsed lungs, broken ribs, bullet lodged in my spleen. I lost over 50% of my blood, passed out, almost died. It was a couple of I'll years of me getting I'll never together. I'll forget that day. I'll never forget that day. I never forget well, that. Guess day. what? Either will I. <laughs> and funny thing is, you told me. You said, "Don't go undercover, man. Let's go this boss right." I said, "I'm gonna go the boss route too, but I'm gonna go the first because I hate this damn uniform. I hate the <laughs> uniform. I hate the way people treated me." But that's another conversation. But yeah. the bottom line is, I went undercover, man, and it, it, it was a blessing in disguise. I got shot, and I got shot in the arm and chest, and it developed a, a ton of ailments that would change my life forever. So here I am, find myself retired. They had me on oxycodone. Dilaudid and Percocet daily, seeing pain management, and I couldn't go to the bathroom for months at a time. I developed all kinds of side effects and issues and irritability. I gained weight. I was out of shape. And you know me and you, we've always kept ourselves in shape. So I was a zombie. So what I ended up doing is quitting altogether all of that stuff. I went through about two weeks of withdrawal from, this, from these different various drugs they had me on. I was, I mean, tapping here, sweating. I mean, I, I looked like I was watching, you know, ID on TV, one of those guys going through withdrawal. It was terrible. And the only thing that saved me was smoking a little bit of weed. It didn't help. It just gave, helped me forget about it from time to time. But as I, so I became a weed smoker. And as a businessman, you know, and I'm retired, I have nobody checking me, it's not legal. So now I don't know where I'm getting this weed from, speaking to a lot of your points. Now I'm, I'm, I'm subject, to, I'm at the mercy of whatever these deals on the street, hiding behind, hiding it from my kids because they made it like it's the plague and it's something bad. And I'm trying to raise my boys and my little baby girl. So I'm in the shed hiding at night just so I can get some sort of relief. But remember, I'm talking about relief. So then if it, is it a drug if it's really giving you relief? It's a plant, it's medicine, and it's a medicinal plant that grows in the ground. So, but it wasn't giving me everything I needed. Number one, I couldn't walk, away, walk around high all day. I wanted to build businesses. As you know, I built an underwear company, had a club and all that kind of stuff. And the only thing that helped me cope with all of these pains and get through this, being totally disabled with all kinds of issues, was to smoke a little bit. Then, one day recently, I owned a restaurant out in Virginia Beach. This tall white guy walks into the, into the restaurant. And he says, um, sits down and I'm serving him, helping my lady. You know, we're doing this thing. And um, this is before COVID. So he tells me he's from Colorado. I know you brought up Colorado. So I, you know, being a former waiter growing up, I start joking with him, I, were you a smoker or a skier? He said, actually, I'm into medicine and I'm a practitioner. And I'm like, what, what is that? I'm coming from when you were doing this whole introduction, that was me, imagine you. And I'm like, oh, sure, you got my attention. Okay, well, I smoke weed, I, I, and, what are you talking about medicine? He's like, yo, right. CB, CBD and CBG and CBNs and this. And I'm like, uh, what? He said, there's a bunch of cannabinoids in this plant. I grow plants up 10,000 feet in the mountains in Colorado. I have my own uh, 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 farmhouse and I grow plant and I make my own medicine farm to boutique. I said, what? You make your own medicine? So, I mean, you mean I, I take medicine in a pill? What are you talking about? He said, nah, you can smoke medicine but you have to control how it's grown so you have a certain amount of things in it. What you're buying in the street, he tells me, has to do with terpenes. Terpenes give it, you know, granddaddy are you and purple haze and all that stuff. Those are named based on what the terpenes do to the plant. Every plant flower has terpenes. A rose has terpenes that gives it the smell, the flavor. So you're giving flavors to these things. They also found out that these terpenes have medicinal value. And these terpenes, along with these other cannabinoids, along with THC, would go into your body and attach to what we have is a human endocannabinoid system. Now, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. I think I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> but we all have this endocannabinoid system. I had to write it down to make sure I said it right. And that <laughs> endocannabinoid system is linked to our nervous system, our digestive system, to our brain and everything. And it controls basically the harmony in our body and it's all over and it, and it is, it, they have, they're called receptors, they're receptors in the brain. So these receptors keep your immune system in balance and deal with any issues and they go and deal with it. So when you smoke marijuana, it's, it's, there's cannabinoids that go in there and go, ha ha, and they go and attach to these different receptors. And unlike chemotherapy, they recognize receptors that are not acting right. And they go, wait a minute, you are miserable. 
Yeah, it was sent some dopamine up to the brain. Now I'm feeling good, hence the good feeling from it. Hey, you are swelling. Now let me go in, now that's, that's the easy one that everybody can recognize too. Oh, there's some euphoria, he's feeling bad. But it also has anxiety. But there are other cannabinoids in there called CBD, which is calming. So you got all these cannabinoids, and depending on what you buy, you can buy one and be stuck in the couch. You can buy one and be moving around. You can buy one and be paranoid, like, yo, what's all going on? It's all because they're grown for that specific reason. And these guys in the street are getting it out and trying to make it as strong as they can, which just bumps up to THC, but they don't know they're messing with the other cannabinoids also. So that brings up, and why is all this going on? Because when you tell, when you tell doctors and scientists and big pharma and Americans that this is a drug that can't be researched, that has no medicinal value whatsoever, and they categorize that, that, that means doctors and scientists can't touch it. Now Canada didn't do that. Amsterdam didn't do that. So when you talk about what this drug was doing to societies before they, you know, dehumanized it, it was just getting, making people feel good. And Lord knows the society needs that right now. Now let me bring in how that made a difference to me. I was already feeling good, but I had issues. I developed, since I've got shot, and you, don't, you know, may know some of this, and some of it you don't, but since I've gotten shot and retired, I developed, and smoking weed, and trying to play tennis, and going back and forth, rehab, shut down for a month, up, down, trying to, on social security, messed up. I never found any kind of harmony in life. All of a sudden, I started developing pain, severe pain in my hips, where I couldn't move, I couldn't bend down to extend my hips. So for me, I'm going, oh shit, yep, getting up to the late 40s, stretch, motherfucker, stretch. So I'm trying to get that right, it ain't working, it's getting worse. Look, dog, I couldn't even, I can't get my leg up here. I couldn't get it up that high, but I can tell you why I can do it later. Couldn't get it up here. Finds out. Now, I didn't find out now yet. So the next thing is my stomach starts killing me. I start cramping. So I bumped it over. I'm teaching tennis. From I can't really move well, but I'm teaching tennis. I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on? I'm like, is it in my, my appendix? But then I get home and my lady says, you know what? You got a bullet there. So I start doing research and I thought I had lead poisoning. This whole, my whole section of my body swole up, dog. My colon, my prostate. Everything, I end up in emergency room. It's about a year and a half ago, in emergency room. Yo, what's going on? I smoke weed, that's all I do. I take no meds, blah, 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 what's going on? Well, let's take you in and check you out. Now, mind you, up until this moment, I got a bullet in my chest, so I can't take MRIs, it's metal. So they can only do CAT scans and X-rays with me, which is also, it keeps them from really seeing what's going on. So I've been in, in and out of hospital this whole time, but they never did anything more than that. So with all of these pains, I'm like, what's going on? They give me some pain meds, which I didn't want, calm the pain down. And then I said to them, um, all right, can you tell me? So they sent me to a doctor, dog, and they said, yo, you have, your colon is inflamed and swollen. Like beyond, like, wow, you might have something wrong, like cancer in there. Then they go, wait, 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 but your prostate on the other side is just as swollen. All, everything's inflamed. I'm like, yo, what the fuck's going on? They sent right. me for a biopsy. They just get them in a biopsy. Boom, they came back, long story, I got prostate cancer, right? So now I got prostate cancer, colitis, and rheumatoid arthritis in three hips. That's three ailments, dog. Add the bullet right. in my stomach. Now, mind you, a couple of years before that, I grew a duplication, a, a duplication cyst, a congenital duplication cyst on my esophagus, and it shut me down. They had to cut my back open, break my ribs, and take it out. Couldn't swallow, couldn't breathe. Right. All this is going on, dog. I'm on every medicine under the sun every time I get a surgery. I'm putting it all together, giving you the quick version. Yeah. So when this, so now that brings me to the state when this white boy walks in there, six foot six, tall white boy, cool, laid back. He said, man, he hands me, I'll show it to you before we get off. He hands me a little bottle and said, this is full spectrum CBD. And I'm gonna break that down. I hope somebody asks you some questions. This is full spectrum CBD, not hemp the audience, CBD. The audience is loving it. The audience is loving you. Not hemp oil, not it's full spectrum CBD. To me, it, foreign language to me, whatever it is, give it to me. How much is it? $150. What? It's this big. He's eating food. He said, buy my lunch and it's yours. I said, no, better yet. I'll give you the buck 50. You buy your lunch because that's business. And I hope it works and I hope to see you again. Give me your card. He gave me a card. Five days later, this dude became my best friend because all my pain was gone. I wow. kid you not, five days dog, all my inflammation, and I didn't know why. So I right. called him back, yo, what the, what? And now that was a year ago. I'm 10 times better than I was then, but for me, just right. going from right. turning the page, 
Like, yo, what? Now, mind you, I was given a bunch of immune suppressants for my cancer, for my prostate, for all this stuff. They give me all this medicine. COVID hits. I ain't taking none of that stuff. I ain't taking none. I'm building my emergency. I just stay away from people, mask up. This yeah. dude's stuff starts working. I start calling them. Now, COVID hits. Everybody shut down. My restaurant shut down. And this stuff is really working. And I'm like, yo. Now, mind you, what I didn't know is that this full-spectrum CBD, which is the government, one state. Now, when you talked about legalizing, the first thing they did was legalize the cannabis plant. That's already done in 50 states. So, hemp, hemp is legal. Okay. Cannabis is legal. Making a medicine is legal. I got pounds of hemp that looks and smells just like weed in my back, in my safe. You can smoke. I sell it. People buy it by the ounce, the quarter, the pound. You can drive around in here. In Virginia just decriminalized it here, which means if you caught with six pounds of weed, they give you a $20 fine, $25 fine. It's a violation. Trust me, they're all on board now, Corey, more than 13 states. New York is on board. So the first thing they did was they legalized the cannabis plant. Bobby Cass, my old duck partner, has a license, is growing out in Powhatan, has his own farm, got a contract with the government growing hemp. Hemp plant. <laughs> now, Bobby Cash. So now, so now you got hemp. So now, and I'm telling you because you're telling them about investments. There are a lot of ways to get into this business. So now you got hemp. Now, hemp's going to save our trees, going to save the paper. It's, yo, it's ridiculous mm -hmm. what hemp can do for this society. Just forget medicine. That's just hemp. T-shirts, cotton, all kinds of stuff that hemp can be made of. Right. Fuel, even fuel can be made out of hemp. So let's move forward to the other side of it. So now, what's the difference between a hemp and a cannabis plant? nothing when you when the plant grows if they remove a certain portion of it as it grows and they take it out before it fully buds there's no what you affectionately call this marijuana there's no bud that has a bunch of medicinal value but no bud so depending on how you build your medicine the government said we're going to legalize legalize cbd because the doctors are no longer saying it's not good for you the doctor's saying oh shoot it 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 is a natural anti-inflammatory, CBD, not THC. So you got all these cannabinoids. They're trying to heal cancer with it, with CBC. They're trying to heal it because it can go to the cancer cell. And what does it do? It shrinks it without messing the other cells up. There are people walking around here right now, if you Google, that said marijuana or, or cannabis healed my cancer, got rid of my cancer. But right. they can't fully, the reason why they haven't fully endorsed it as the miracle plant to do that because we're so far behind in studying this plant and right. how to use it and how to get it goes and how can it go on Corey and make him sleepy, then go on stone and make him hungry and then go on him and make him stuck and make it him because we all have an endocannabinoid system that has different ailments. So depending on what's wrong with you, it impacts you differently. So they have to figure out how do we get to Stoney's cancer? My son has epilepsy. He's right. on CBD. It controls his auras, and they got him on this other stuff. It also helps control his seizures. Not fully, because I can't get me a science and doctor to just focus on just him, because they won't fully legalize it. And I'm talking in circles a little bit, but bringing that back yeah, yeah. to what is legal. So the first thing they did was legalize the plant. The next thing they did was say, we're going to legalize medicinal marijuana, which means that now... New York is already legal for this. You have right. to get a marijuana card. Right. Now, with that said, you got to go to this marijuana card. Every state has their own laws. D.C., which has been before Virginia and New York mm -hmm. before us, they said that if you have these particular ailments, you can get it. Virginia says, Virginia and a lot of other states says, we're going to let a bidding company, like you said, a big a bidding company, the one out here is Columbia Care. They're a multi-million dollar company. They came out here with a bunch of guys that said, we won Hampton Roads. Columbia Care won. They're the dispensary. I'm actually a person that gives the recommendations and dispenses everything until you get to 0.3 THC in your medicine. Once you go over 0.3, you got to go to the official dispensary, who I work with. The dispensary right. head pharmacist buys my CBD. He buys my, my yeah. CBD pens and stuff like that because they can't do that. The dispensary grows all indoors, all their medicine inside there and makes their medicine there. You come to me, I have a nurse that works in my office and she approves you. You pay $165, you go through the state here, I collect all your medical information. She says, okay, I've turned down three people for their card so far. All three of them is because I need to speak to their psychologist. 
they have psychological issues. Everybody else got approved. Once you get approved, you can't prescribe, they give a recommendation. With this recommendation, you go on the state website and then you email that to them and they email you your card. With that card, you can now go not only to Virginia, but to any place that's open that kind of like, like the gun laws, if you uh, got a gun in New York, you know, they, so they have certain right, states, right. like DC said, and DC says any state that has a dispensary that is fully operational, we're not operational yet, we open in January, that's fully operational can use their card in my spot. So these guys are piling in to get these cards for a couple of reasons, even though the dispensary's right. They want to explain to their job why they have weed in their system. Right. Even though mine only has 0.3, if you keep doing, if you keep doing it, 0.3 adds up. They take exactly. your hair, they do your fat, blah, blah, blah. So, and mind you, and I want to make a quick point about that too. Me and you, I smoked weed before I got hired on the job. They never touched it after. Easy. Dog, you're either a robber or a cop. You're not both. There's nothing worse than a fucking <laughs> dirty cop. Nigga, we yeah. was, when we was thugs, we was good thugs. And that was right. it. We were anti-police. When we became police, yeah. we were anti-thug. You know what right. I mean? We love our people, right. but we were anti. Like, you can't be a cop and a thug, dude. That's just, it's just like, it's, it just doesn't go in here. You don't steal well, you know? So I gave right. everything up. I kept my friends at a distance. You right. know what I mean? That's enough to say, because I didn't want to get in trouble. Didn't want to get them in trouble. And ever, right. well, the same thing applies. Well, with all of that said, why would we have so afraid? Think about why we were so afraid. I knew cats on the job with me, dog, that would go get a sniff up coke, heroin, do all kinds of stuff, and come back a week later and get tested and pass. Right. We, one pull of a joint, two months later, you're still in trouble. You know why? Because of everything wow. I just explained. The body loves it. The body loves the cannabis plant. Now, what's the abuse part? Let's talk about the abuse part, because I already told you it saved me. I take this medicine, I take a, a half a tincture every morning and every night. Now, the THC is the wild card. The THC bumps up the CBD and helps you travel better. The, C, the THC is very important, but it also gets you high. So the abuse comes if you smoke too much. So if you smoke every day, all day, let's, let me just start by saying this. I'm not an advocate for anyone to get this medicine via smoking although it's the cheapest, because smoking your lungs is not good. I don't care what the source is, number right. one. Number two, some of the side effects of smoking cannabis and a THC can make you less motivated. That could be good if you want to, but if you're young and trying to accomplish things, that's the last thing you want. So then right. we turn into the abuse side, and I understand parents and people saying, I want abuse, it's just getting high, but when you approach it from a medicinal side, I wish I had a dollar for everybody I got off of that Xanax and all that crap. Don't touch it. I wish I had everybody that stopped smoking cigarettes because they smoke hemp. Everybody that don't pop them pills and drink wine every night, they take a little tincture or drink CBD, no THC. This is my Red Bull, dog. You see me flying right wow. now? You know uh -huh. how much I just work. I done taught five hours uh -huh. of tennis, went to my <laughs> restaurant, and rushed yeah. over here to sit down with my dog. And I needed this, otherwise I'd have been asleep. But again, yeah. no sugar, no sugar, no nothing. CBD infused yeah. into water. And now I'm waking up, I'm sharp, it's calming, and all of that stuff. Here's another fact I want to teach you about the CBD. There's two different ways, two things I discuss in my office when they come in here. I'm, whether I'm helping cancer patients or, got, or whoever they are. Two different things. There's delivery, how do you get the medicine in your system, and then there's dosing. In delivery, we spoke about smoking. The best way to deliver anything in your system, but we can't do it, is by injecting. Right into the veins. We know that when you go to the hospital, that's where they 